Hi, welcome to this episode of Lunchtime Live with the Wild Center. My name is Shannon and I'm a naturalist at the center. And this edition of Lunchtime Live is going to feature the spotted salamander. So I'm actually right behind a vernal pool right now. And tonight I'm gonna to take you all herping, which is the act of looking for herps, reptiles and amphibians. So the spotted salamander is a pretty common salamander to the eastern half of the US, found primarily in the northeastern US and Canada. And although these guys are really easy to recognize with their beautiful coloration and characteristic spots, you rarely ever see them. And that's because they are a fossorial species of salamander, meaning that they spend a lot of their life under the ground. They will come to the surface to feed, but they're also nocturnal, so they do that in the evening hours. The best chance you have of seeing the spotted salamander is actually during their mating and breeding season, which takes place in vernal pools in the springtime. So tonight, it's a relatively warm spring night, a little rainy, a little windy, so I'm hoping to get lucky and spot the elusive spotted salamander. So right now, I am currently at a vernal pool, and vernal means of or in the spring. So these are pools of water that form in the springtime after the snow and ice melt. And you can see raindrops dropping in this pond. So it's a nice warm, rainy spring evening. And most salamanders will return to the same vernal pool year after year. So last year, I actually did find many spotted salamanders in this pool. So I'm going to wait until nightfall and hopefully they become active. This vernal pool here is the perfect location for salamanders and other amphibians to lay their eggs because they lack predators. So if a salamander were to lay their eggs in a bigger pond or a bigger area of water that's more permanent, oftentimes a lot of other animals live in those ponds such as fish. Fish will often eat salamander eggs before they have a chance to hatch. Crayfish may eat salamander eggs, frogs, there's a lot of other animals that see those eggs as a source of food. So these vernal pools oftentimes don't have nearly as many predators and the eggs are therefore safer in these pools of water. So now it is nighttime and I am back at the very same vernal pool hoping to find some salamanders. You can see my glow in the dark headlight and I am going to turn it on so I can see the pool and the spotted salamanders. All right, I'm gonna crouch down now, and here is the first one. Its spots definitely help it stand out at night, and they actually serve as a warning sign to potential predators, as spotted salamanders can secrete a toxin that make them taste very bitter, um, and therefore, most animals aren't going to want to eat them. Spotted salamanders are typically between six to 10 inches long, including their tail, with females being bigger than males. They are a stout species of salamander with wide snouts and a bluish black to dark gray coloration with two uneven rows of yellow spots running from their head down to their tail and even out onto their legs and toes. Their bellies are a lighter gray color. When they feel threatened, their first mode of defense is to hide or burrow. If that's not an option, they release a toxic milky substance from glands near their neck and back. They are also known to shed their tail if attacked from behind as a mechanism to escape. They can regenerate lost body parts, but it takes a massive amount of energy. Spotted salamanders are also a relatively docile species of salamander, meaning they are non-aggressive. I gently scoop this one up to give you a closer look at its features and so you can see its size relative to my hand. Whenever you handle an amphibian, you need to be very cautious because they are very sensitive animals. I made sure my hands were nice and clean and that I hadn't used any products on them, such as lotion or hand sanitizer, which can harm salamanders due to their thin and permeable skin. You also need to be gentle, again, because they do have a thin layer of skin that protects their bodies, and also mindful of their small but strong legs and toes. I'm holding the salamander with an open palm, not putting any pressure on it with my hand. I'm also holding it very low to the ground. If it got frightened and decided to squirm away, I don't want it falling from a great height. So I always want to hold them nice and close to the ground. And since this may be stressful for the salamander, I'm only going to handle it for a very short period of time, returning it right back to where I found it. Plus, I enjoy watching them in their natural habitat even more so. So I'm going to slowly release this little salamander right back to the edge of the vernal pool where I found him and see what he decides to do next.
For a majority of the year, spotted salamanders live under the leaf litter or in burrows in forests. Here's an example of a salamander starting to burrow under this log and go into hiding. You can see how it uses its flexible body to shimmy under the log and to slowly disappear. You can also see the lighter coloration on the side of its body very well here. As I mentioned before, these salamanders are fossorial, spending a lot of time hidden or underground, only coming to the surface to feed and for mating in the springtime. Spotted salamanders eat a variety of foods as adults, mainly insects, arachnids, and other invertebrates, such as beetles, centipedes, spiders, worms, and even snails. They have a sticky tongue that they use to catch insects as adults. On the first warm evening in the spring, they start to move toward vernal pools to find a mate. Breeding also takes place in these same pools on a rainy spring evening. Once the female lays her eggs, the adults will leave the pools and head back to the forest, and the young are on their own to undergo their metamorphosis, or their change. When the water is warm enough, the eggs will hatch into the larval stage. The larvae are about a half an inch long and have feathery external gills that they use to breathe underwater, and only front legs, and they'll remain in the vernal pools. They eat zooplankton and aquatic insects. And in about two to four months, they'll lose those external gills and finish developing, becoming juveniles and leaving the water. Of the 200 or so eggs laid by each female, unfortunately, most aren't going to make it to the juvenile stage due to predation, disease, and the chance that the vernal pool could dry up before they finish developing. But those that do make it to the land dwelling stages, both juvenile and adult, can live for 20 years in the wild, with some surviving into their 30s. And that's because as adults, they don't have as many predators and are pretty good at hiding. As you can see here, watching this salamander disappear under the moss. Pretty impressive. All right, well that concludes this portion of Lunchtime Live with the Wild Center. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the spotted salamander and seeing them in their natural habitat. They are by far my favorite species of salamander that can be found here in the Adirondack Park and in the Northeast. So I always really enjoy going out and looking for them during the spring season in those vernal pools. So thanks for joining me. I'm glad we found some. And uh, if you have any questions about the spotted salamander or other varieties of salamanders, feel free to refresh your Facebook page and join me for a live q and I'll be coming on live right after this video ends. All you have to do is refresh that page and you'll see me again. But thank you so much for tuning in to Lunchtime Live uh, and supporting the Wild Center during this time. We really do appreciate you all and are going to continue bringing you fun content during Lunchtime Live.